Over 43% of the internet runs on WordPress. And when you look at the incredible ecosystem, it's really no surprise why so many people choose WordPress. There's just one problem, and it's a doozy, hacking. Because of the sheer number of installs out there, WordPress sites get hammered. One study found that in 2018, over 90% of the sites that got hacked were running WordPress. It's not a matter of if you get hacked, it's a matter of when and how badly. But there's a different way to run WordPress that makes it virtually unhackable. And I don't think enough developers know how it works, so we're gonna fix that today. I'm Jason Langsdorf, let's go learn something new. To create a WordPress install that's far less susceptible to malicious attacks, we're going to be using a concept called decoupling. And what that means is we're gonna keep our WordPress admin in one place and then completely separate the public display of our WordPress content on a separate site. By keeping the public and admin parts of our WordPress site decoupled, hackers can't use most of their automated attacks because the WordPress admin isn't accessible at all from the public site. For the rest of this video, we're gonna build out a project and show how it works. To get WordPress running on my local computer, I'm using an app called Local. This sets up PHP, MySQL, Nginx, and anything else that we need to have a local WordPress install running. Once you've installed the app, hit this Create New Site button. We're gonna call this Unhackable WordPress. Pick a username and pick a password. And this is gonna configure everything that we need. Once we've done that, we have a running site. And I'm going to turn on this one-click admin and choose my user. And then we can open the WordPress admin. The site I'm building today is going to be a blog. I'm gonna import a couple posts to get us started. And I've got those here. So I'm uploading a file there. We're going to assign those posts to me. And now if I go to my posts, I'm gonna delete the, the default hello world because we don't need it. And I'm gonna go in here and update my user so that I can have a display name as my author byline. We'll display publicly as Jason Langsdorf and I can update my profile. And finally, because I don't wanna to have to manage images and I want those to be accessible from wherever, I'm gonna use the Cloudinary plugin. Using a tool like Cloudinary means that the URLs are no longer tied to the WordPress admin instance. And again, we don't want to give hackers any indication of where our WordPress admin install is. So Cloudinary is gonna put this on a Cloudinary URL, which keeps our WordPress admin site completely decoupled. To set this up, I already have an account. I need to get this connection string, which is gonna live on my Cloudinary dashboard. Copy, head back to my setup. Now that I've got the Cloudinary plugin configured, I've got my posts imported, and I've updated the featured image so that we have those available for us as well. Now, in a typical WordPress install, we would start looking at the theme and figuring out a way to put this on the publicly hosted WordPress side. But because we're decoupling, we're gonna set up an entirely separate site. So let's head over to Astro. You can use any front-end framework that you prefer as long as it's able to pull in content from a third-party API. I prefer Astro because I only wanna ship HTML and CSS when it's necessary, but you can use whatever you prefer. I'm gonna copy this command to create a new Astro site and I'm going to open up a terminal. In my terminal, I'm gonna run the command and it's going to install the necessary dependencies. It's got this friendly little robot that'll teach us how things work. I'm going to give my project a name, unhackable WordPress Astro, and I'm going to set up an empty site. In the code, we can see that we've got just a couple of pages in here, the first one being this index.astro. So I'm going to add first and foremost a layout and we'll make this our default layout. And this is gonna be shared across all of the pages. It gives us a shared header and footer and this slot is where anything custom is gonna go. Next up, head into the index. So we pull in the layout from the layouts folder, wrap that around the whole thing. We're gonna use this to set up a listing of our blog preview. So a headline, and then each blog preview is gonna be wrapped in an article with the title, an excerpt, and a link to read more. And we'll just repeat that for each entry in our blog post. Next, we need to create the full blog post. So we're gonna create a subfolder called blog, and inside of that, we'll create a template.astro. This, again, uses that shared layout. We show the featured image up at the top, blog post title, a byline, including the author name, the full post content, and then a link back. To test this, we can head to the terminal and run Netlify dev. I'm using the Netlify CLI here. You can also use NPM run dev, and this opens up our full blog. So here, running at localhost 8888, it's auto-detected that we're using Astro. I'm going to click into this example blog post, and we can see here's the full post with our title, a byline, and the full post content. So at this point, you've got content, 
and you've got a site design. Now, how do you fit those things together in a decoupled way? The original approach would be to create a WordPress theme, which is then hosted on the WordPress install. But that opens up automated attacks from hackers because they can guess the WP admin URL and try to brute force your login and take over your site. By separating where we manage our content in the WordPress admin from where we publicly host it on the live site, we've completely eliminated an attack vector because the public site can run without any access to the WordPress admin after we've initially built it. That means no matter how hard they try, attackers can't get to the WordPress admin from the public site because it's not there at all. To get our post data out via API, we're gonna need one more tool. There are a few options for how you can get data out of a WordPress site. We're gonna be using one called WP GraphQL. Add a new plugin, search for WP GraphQL, and we're going to install and then activate it. That gives us a GraphQL tab and a GraphQL IDE. And from here, we can use this query composer so I wanna get my posts and I want to get the nodes that is GraphQL speak for individual post items. And for each one, I want the title, I want the slug, I want the featured image. And for each featured image, I want to get the media item URL, the source set, the sizes, and I want the alt text. I want the content and my format for that is going to be rendered. I want the HTML. And so that I can finish my byline, the author. And all I need for the author for this design is the name. I can rename this query to load all posts. We can run it and we can see the title, slug, our featured image data, and here is the actual content. And this is gonna be used to load the full blog post. So that'll live in this template.astro. We can set it up right in here and then let's head back to WordPress. Now we're getting the title, the slug, and the excerpt. We can rename this query and that one is gonna live in our index. Okay, so those are the queries that'll let us get our data. To actually send this query from our Astro site, we're gonna create a data utility because we're gonna share it between the blog page and the listing page. So we're gonna put this in a folder called data and we'll call it wordpress.ts. So we're gonna start with a function called WP query. It's an async function that we will export from this file. It's going to accept two arguments, which will be query and variables. We're going to give them a type of WP GraphQL params query, which is gonna be a string. And then the variables are optional and those will be an object. The object can contain anything because queries define which variables they need. We apply that type here. So to start, we need to send a request to our WordPress backend by looking at the settings here, it shows us what our endpoint is, and we can grab that right out of here. This is only gonna run during the build, so we're not exposing this URL publicly in any way. We wanna set the method to post. We send along a content type header, and then we're going to send in our body as a stringified object that has the query and the variables. If there's an error, res.ok will not be true, at which point we can console log everything and just return an empty object. If everything's okay, we wanna extract out the data because if we look at this query, it comes back with a key of data to start and we don't need that. We can go straight into posts. That's what we return. Now to actually use this, we'll go into our index.astro, import WP query from data WordPress. To use the utility, we're gonna load the response of it into data await WP query. And you can see here, because we added some types that it tells us what it needs. So we need a query. So we can just drag that right in and I'm gonna indent it for legibility. And because we don't need any variables, we can leave those out here. Now, this data is usable for us. We can loop over it, data.post.nodes, and if you wanna see how this looks, you can come in here and see data.post.nodes. This is an array, so we're gonna map over this, and each one of those is gonna be a post, which we're gonna to type to any because this is not a TypeScript tutorial, but in a production app, you should write some types. We can grab this article here, do a tiny bit of formatting. And so for both of these templates, we wanna use the post.slug, post.title. This one's gonna be a little bit different because it gives us back HTML. So we have to use a fragment component and the set HTML option to pass in post.excerpt. And that is a self-closing tag. So now once we save that, we can see that it's working. We've got our titles, excerpts and links coming in. But if we click through to read one of these, it's not here yet because we have not yet built the dynamic pages. So our template is gonna change to what's called a dynamic route. And we can rename this. By putting the slug in square brackets, it means that anything at slash blog slash 
whatever content is gonna be redirected to this page. Astrodynamic routes require us to export a function called getStaticPaths. This function tells Astro which pages need to exist here. We need to actually load our data again so we can come in to our index.astro and grab this data. And we're gonna use the exact same setup here, but this time we're gonna put it inside of getStaticPaths. And that means that we need to import WP query. Now this is no longer the query that we wanna run. We wanna run this one instead so we can come down here and grab it. GetStaticPaths expects us to return an array with an object for each page. Because we have all of our posts stored in this array here, we can actually return a map of these nodes. Map over our nodes, and we are going to return an object. This object has two properties, params, which is required, and props, which is optional. So for params, we need to send back the slug, post.slug, and this is gonna match whatever is in the square brackets. So if it was post, this would be post, and so on. And then for each one of these, we can tell it to send in some props. And in our case, we've already loaded the post, so let's just send it through. So now down here, we're gonna have access to this post, which we can get by destructuring the props for the page. That comes in from the astroglobal.props. So for the image, we wanna use the featured image. The media item URL is the default image. A source set and the sizes gives the browser hints on different sizes of images to use to improve performance. And then the alt text helps with accessibility. For the title, the post title, same for the byline. And for the post content, that's gonna be rendered HTML. So we wanna use that fragment again. Now, if we click into one of these posts, it's doing the thing. So this is a fully decoupled site. It's giving us post previews, as well as a full post listing, all pulled from the WordPress API. Okay, so here's where the magic happens. Open up your terminal and run npm run build. And it's gonna create this dist folder, which has static HTML and CSS in it. And if we open this up, we can see the content of our post is in here. It's been built to static HTML. It doesn't need the WordPress site anymore. And that means we can deploy it in a way that has no dependence or connection to the WordPress site at all. We're gonna use Netlify to host this site because it is purpose-built for hosting decoupled websites like this. Log in or you can sign up using your GitHub. Once you're logged in, head over to the Sites tab and down at the bottom, there's a drag and drop box. If we move into our site folder in our finder, we can find that dist and I can drag that right here and it's gonna upload that site. And our site is now running at a public URL that is hosted here. You can go find it right now and we can go see all of our content and data. What that means for us is I can come back and I can actually stop this site. So I've turned off my unhackable WordPress. And if I come over here and try to run it, I'm gonna get a 502 because the site is down. But if I come back to my public site again, that content is still here. So this site cannot be used to hack the WordPress install because the WordPress install is literally powered down. So this is the power of a decoupled site. Your WordPress backend is unhackable when we've deployed it like this on Netlify because the WordPress site is literally powered down. There's nothing to hack. Now we can take this further. We could deploy this code to GitHub and set up Netlify to automatically rebuild every time this code changes. We can also set up a webhook in WordPress to rebuild the site anytime that we update the WordPress content. We're not gonna cover that in this video, but you could use something like WP Engine or one of the many other services out there that allows one-click WordPress hosting and put it on a different URL from your public site, which means that there's still no way for the public site to expose what your WordPress backend is doing. The public site is completely decoupled. For more on how to build decoupled WordPress sites, including automatic rebuilds when content or code changes, here's a recommended video. See you next time.